Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Decorate With Me. I'm Alessandra, and today we are continuing on our Decorate With Me Bridgerton edition. Now, season two has been out for about a week or two, and people are loving it, myself included. And so we're just kind of going to go chronologically in uh, order of what we see in the series as far as parties, balls, stories, whatever you want to call it. And that brings us to the second ball that we see. We're still in episode one, and this is essentially the queen's ball. And it's, you know, it's the same exact one that she had the dialogue about Lady Danbury. So Lady Danbury was first and the queen's ball was second. Obviously, um, like the queen said, it's a lot smaller of attended. Uh, she, you know, she was very particular about who she put on the guest list, as you can see here. So it's not nearly as large. Uh, and this is the moment that people attending these functions were anticipating her, uh, i.e. Queen Charlotte, to announce the season's diamond because when the debutantes were being presented, that's when Lady Whistledown dropped and all hell broke loose essentially. So, <laughs> you know, the, the anticipation is that this is where we will find out who the diamond is. And spoilers, we do! Um, but that's not really the focus of this design concept. Uh, th this queen's ball is actually quite on par with what we saw the queen's entertaining and hostess uh, colors essentially in season one. Just like Lady Danbury colors for her ball this season were very similar to that of season one. And what we're seeing here is a lot of crystal, a lot of lighter golds, not, not really champagne, uh, just lighter golds, traditional golds, candlelight, and then really the only pop of color we see here are the yellow arrangements. There's a few of them spread out throughout the room, and a little bit of yellow floral on the uh, staircase. But other than that, it's just, it's a traditionally elegant ballroom, and white gold, light gold crystal, that's kind of what we're going for, because that's what they're going for. And a tall tale sign of confirming what you thought you already knew is looking at the costumes. Because the costumes are very themed in the series, which I love. And I mean, Queen Charlotte is exactly what we were talking about. Uh, whites, light golds, uh, even some regular gold, a little pearl accent. Uh, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. That being said, we kind of had a sim- there's a lot of white and gold going on in this series anyways. So I took the inspiration from the evening's ball that the queen had and then kind of merged it with the queen's, um, I'm assuming breakfast or something the next morning she had at the palace where she's out in the courtyard, I'm assuming having some breakfast, something. And I took this screenshot. It's not the best quality, so go with me here. But I loved it because if you if you notice the details, whenever they show the queen in her kind of home setting, everything is just obnoxious in the sense of like, really, you put a lemon fruit topiary together and then, you know, that's not enough. We're sticking a little model sailboat and pearls on it. And this is not the first time we've seen something like this. We saw it um, the first season with Prince Friedrich uh, in that moment. They were having lunch, I believe. So anyways, I just thought, you know, this is a fun, um, addition to layer into kind of the classic white and gold that we were already seeing. Also, we have more white and gold because that's kind of the royal colors, if you will. We see that all the time. And we can see here, and then again here a little bit, this fabric was also used in the Queen's tent in season one with the little stars. And I, I, I remember looking for that fabric and I couldn't find it. <laughs> but um, it's nice to know that they're being consistent with that. Uh, Queen Charlotte is going to be our official inspiration this week. And so light gold, white, and then kind of pale yellow uh, is, is what we're going to be focusing around as we design. So what is this? Well, it's not really going to be a wedding, but it is going to be a celebration fit for a diamond. We're kind of taking that and translating it to a more modern time where we might have 
the lady of the hour be the bride to be the mommy to be the birthday girl any of those types of celebrations i think this could be a really beautiful and elegant way to celebrate that special lady in your life for you and you that being said, I wanted to make sure everything we did today could be scaled down to something that you literally could do yourself. You could buy the elements and you could put this together. You don't need a professional, in my opinion, to do any of this. You just need a little bit of time and patience. So taking in mind, we have the ballroom, which is, of course, in like a, I'm sure it's in a beautiful palace somewhere over in Europe. Since not all of us are likely going to be accessing anything like that, I figured we'll take the elements of the ballroom we love and we'll take the queen's, um, we'll say brunch tent, because for lack of a better term, and we're going to turn it into a beautiful pop-up tent situation that we can do in our own backyards or in a special local place, maybe a park or something. And I found this multi-pole tent, which I, I thought it was beautiful. It's not super huge. Uh, so definitely check the dimensions when you look online for it um, and the exact products that you are seeing in all of my slides as always are linked down below so if you want to get the exact items that i used in my mood boards you're welcome to and i highly recommend using some of those links even if you don't buy those exact products a lot of the recommended products might be a good fit for you too if the one that i showed you maybe isn't the exact version you're looking for so all of that in the comments and description down below and then okay so tent cool very beautiful tent and this is a nice unique tent so if the weather is nice you could probably roll up maybe the front panels and then if the weather is crappy you could leave it down and it's gonna look really pretty and we have a lot of draping going on here so i found nice they're not quite champagne they're definitely more of a light gold drapes and it's faux silk uh, be careful when you're ordering the drapes. Make sure you read the descriptions. And given that this is a spring environment, I would advise against using a lot of heavy velvets or anything like that. But depending on when you're doing this, it may not matter. And then, okay, we might be getting a little over our heads with the details, but uh, the detailing that we see with the stars here, I was like, okay, if you can't get that fabric, you could totally get those as stickers right so i found star stickers that are in gold that are removable and i was like you could totally put that on the tent and make fake panels and nobody would be any wiser so those are just like little details you could layer on if you wanted so making sure that we have a nice pretty entrance with some draping put in here I, it's hard to tell uh, what kind of drape support you have here so uh, the, again, this is where the time and patience element might come in. So you might need to put a pipe and base kit in here uh, just to make a more formal entrance. I don't know. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell from the description. Either way, uh, if you wanted to leave the drapes hanging, that would be perfectly fine. I did find some beautiful gold cord tassels that have a nice, beautiful braided finish. And I thought, okay, I could see this being an extension over here if we layer it up right. And then just to make everything look a little bit more formal, like you're having a nice entrance this outdoors, especially on a grass or even a paver situation uh, because everything's uneven. I don't recommend any sort of red carpet per se, but you can make a beautiful entrance with some nice topiaries uh, that are elevated in a nice narrow and tall urn or planter like this. And it's just a nice way to set the tone for what guests can expect going in. And then I thought, you know, one of the big focuses is always, uh, always <laughs> going to be food. And we briefly talked about this in the design inspiration, how they, the stylists just have such a funny uh, sense of humor with the like the boat here. We got the pineapples sitting on this, uh, this vase. So a lot of beautiful things. And just so you know, when I was looking for these elements, I was looking, f I used the keywords like footed bowl or scalloped footed bowl tall or something you know there's something along those lines and then i started going into more like um victorian base you know and that's where you could get a little bit more of these shapes so it's not necessary i don't know that it's exactly victorian or regency like i'm not really sure on where we draw the line of like what era this stuff is but i'm telling you just be open with your search terms It'll, you'll get a lot better results and then here we see like the pearls continuing to drip over things. So 
we are going to make a fantastic buffet out of similar elements and I did find some statement pieces because I mean there's some really ornate stuff going on here and this is fit for the queen and by extension fit for our diamond uh, the lady of the hour so I thought if you're gonna do this and be like a really fancy over-the-top intimate soiree you might as well go for it so that's why we have these two vases this is a three-tiered vase and this is just a nice big tall vase now they put floral in it and I liked the picture for the listing but obviously you could make fruit sculptures and stick sailboats in it you know if you're into that uh, I did find a sailboat look looks remarkably similar and it's not the same one but it's very similar and I figured you could wedge that in if you wanted to or put nice fruit in there and make a whole moment with some string pearls and not everything has to be totally functional on the buffet some of it could just be display purposes and some of it could be actual food and so that's why we see things like this candy dish this glass uh, crystal and gold vase where you could actually put proper food in there and then I found this nice scalloped edged bowl and I liked the scallop because we kind of have soft we're not soft we have more organic edges around a lot of this stuff ex except for this one but this one you can't tell it's got like kind of like petals around it but anyways I liked this scallop being consistent throughout all of it but this one in particular is big enough to be a big bowl for like maybe salads or something like that but it could also be your punch bowl depending on you know how many guests you're having so keep that in mind multi-purpose options uh, when you're when you're looking at items uh, you can only you only have so much space in your house or wherever you're storing all this stuff so you might as well get stuff that's multi-purpose in my opinion and crystal is a great way to do that and then we're gonna have lower bowls here the kind of medium size and then I found this beautiful gold candelabra but it's really like a fruit bowl or a vase because this up here you're supposed to put an arrangement in it and then you could put little small arrangements in here or LED candles but I think little arrangements and flowers would be really pretty especially if you had a nice arrangement at the top and you know I'm sure everybody can probably go to the store these days and buy a pineapple uh, but they actually weigh a lot so depending on if you were gonna buy you know a formal piece of um, decor like this I'm not sure I'd want to put a real pineapple in there so I found a faux one online that looked pretty good and then I liked this it's kind of a light gold but it's not super metallic but I liked the texture of this and you want to know what's so great about it it's made for a fold-up table because anybody who's been following my channel for a while knows that I love a good fold-up table tablescape uh, and it's hard sometimes to get nice looking tablecloths like real tablecloths to go over them this one's fitted for a six foot but I do believe they have it in other sizes they definitely have it in other colors and I thought this is a nice way to add some texture to help balance out all of the texture going on up here without being too overbearing now here <laughs> is a loose interpretation of how everything theoretically could play out when styled on your table the only thing we didn't see is the pearls draped in because there's it's so small you're not going to see it but know that you can get very affordable string of pearls uh in a bright white or kind of an ivory cream white whatever you're you're styling towards and you could just cut this however long you need it and drape it and pin it and again very easy to do just takes a little bit of time and patience and then as far as the tablescape goes I mean I wanted something similar <laughs> so the only thing here uh, that you can't well I guess nothing's impossible with the right amount of money but the only thing here that you can't just buy and have in your permanent collection would be this tablecloth and it's a rental from cloth connection and I have used them before although not as often as some of the other rental companies that I've um, used periodically and some of my other designs but they do have a wonderful collection to choose from and that's where we found this kind of lemon softer lemon uh, brocade tablecloth and you can see the close-up of it here but I, what I really love about it is it's technically listed as lemon and it is kind of yellow but it's kind of the yellow it's sort of a gold it's kind of a light gold depending on the light and I just I really liked that being the little 
pop of yellow that we're having in here. Then I got this darker yellow napkin, which I love because it has the tassels in it already, and I thought, oh, it looks really fun. And then, again, this is, I'm assuming, a luncheon type situation, so we probably might bring in some formal chairs like the shivaris and that's another great way for us to incorporate some pearl with these little accents on the back of them and now maybe it's just for the lady of the hour uh the birthday girl uh or maybe it's for everybody i don't know it depends you it's your party you do what you want uh but i like having the little pearl accents being consistent throughout and then i did hang some pearls off of the little arrangement here uh, now this is a, a beautiful ornate footed bowl much smaller than the ones we saw in the buffet but I thought you know if you put some foam in there and you get a couple bouquets that are already made up as a bouquet of roses uh, silk roses especially because then you have to put water in your very very nice new bowl uh, you could have a really quick arrangement in no time and then you could you know if you wanted to work a ship in you could wedge a ship in or wedge a little pineapple in or whatever whatever nod to Bridgerton you wanted to do. So this is our only tablescape for this look and that's just because for a function like this that's probably daytime and probably a more smaller intimate group I don't think you need to have a lot of varied looks in this setting. You're absolutely able to, it's very easy to do, uh, I just don't think it needs it. So that's that's just me but I hope this gives you some inspiration if you need more ideas and then the lady of the hour you're there to celebrate her so the moms to be always like getting pictures with um, maybe the god moms and the ladies that came to the shower the birthday girl always wants pictures with her friends and her loved ones and so I thought what a fun way to make your own photo wall area but have it make it make make the lady of the hour feel like she is a queen and so that's where we found the need for this gorgeous love seat which is gilded uh tufted just ornate and they do it, it does come with some pillows and truthfully for the price it should but I, I wasn't crazy about all the pillows so i replaced <laughs> some with uh some of the pillows that i thought looked nicer with it and then i love this uh tie well, they're sort of tie backs, but they're they're the loop curtains, which I know we've talked about reasons not to use them, but hear me out. I was thinking for the backdrop, if you used just this, it would be fine. But I'm a more is more, and the queen seems to be a more is more too kind of lady. So I thought, let's say, okay, we're gonna assume that you're gonna need a pipe and base kit for the wall to hold up the curtain here. So if you're going to be putting these on one at a time, you maybe you could figure out how to enter um, loop them as they're going on. So you could have this beautiful embroidered overlay on top, putting out this nice design for that extra texture. I have not done this specifically, so I can't guarantee it's going to work, but I think it will, and I suspect it would look pretty great. And totally optional, but in the pictures. It's important to look at what's on the floor and I found this beautiful rug which I thought looked really nice with the look we were going for and has a lot of the same color palettes with just that nice soft blue in there and I thought Meh, if you needed something on the floor this could look really great so just to wrap everything up so you can see all of the finished mood boards all at once we have the royal tent fit for our diamond we have lots of beautiful topiaries we have the star detailing some tassels some beautiful curtains we have the Grand Buffet, which if you're going to buy these statement pieces, I, you know, if you like the style, then you are going to love these pieces. They are definitely going to be the showstoppers and people are going to be wowed to see them, I'm sure. We also have our simple but elegant tablescape with lots of pearls, a little bit of lemon and some gold, <laughs> lots of gold. And then of course the photo booth area fit for the queen herself with beautiful traditional rugs embroidery and very very fancy sofa love seat and while that technically concludes our decorate with me for the queen's diamond ball luncheon if you need something that is scaled up larger where you know you're going to bring in professionals on a local level to help set up and design for you might I suggest you checking out my Queen's Garden Party from season one of Bridgerton and like we said earlier a lot of the colors are very similar from 
season one to season two within the, each family. So the queen's colors in season one are very similar to the queen's colors in season two. And so there might be some really great inspiration in that particular party design that you might find helpful, especially if you're scaling up. Uh, and if you need any more Bridgerton inspired decor, I also have a whole board on Pinterest dedicated to anything and everything that I see actually from Bridgerton, something that reminds me of Bridgerton, something that I want to put in a Bridgerton theme party or wedding. And uh, I guarantee you uh, there's a good chance there's more <laughs> on this board than your Google search result at this point. So make sure to check that out. The link is down below in the description so you can enjoy that at your leisure. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Alessandra. Thanks for decorating with me today. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes we have in the works. Bye, friends.